As soon as I saw the Justin Bieber sushi date night blanket, I knew I had to make it, and I'm going to show you how you can make it too. You're going to need a few materials to be able to make your very own viral Justin Bieber sushi date night blanket. And the first is yarn. I'm using 11 different colors and this is a medium weight acrylic yarn. You'll also need a crochet hook and this is a five millimeter. You'll need a pair of scissors and a yarn needle. If you'd like to make your blanket exactly like mine, I have a free resource for you. I have a color combination chart as well as the color chart for how you're going to join all the squares together and you can find a link for that free resource in the description box below. I looked at Justin Bieber's blanket very carefully because I wanted to get the color combinations right and I also wanted to get the placement of those granny squares in the correct order. You may have heard me just use the word granny square and that's because this particular type of crocheted square is called a granny square. So you may hear me refer to that or if you ever want to look up different types of granny squares now you know the word for it. The only thing to note is that while I tried to get the exact colors, my local craft store did not have the exact color blue that was in his blanket, so I just chose a very pretty blue color. So you could look for yarns that are the perfect colors, or you can do like I did and find the ones that are available to you and just go with it because the blanket is going to be gorgeous even if the colors aren't exactly perfect. The first thing that I want to share with you in the free resource is the color combination chart. And you're going to see that all of the different combinations are listed here and each square is labeled A all the way through H. You'll see that for each one of the squares, it has listed the first and second rounds, third rounds, fourth rounds, and fifth rounds. When you're looking at a granny square, this is the first round, the second round, third round, fourth round, and the fifth round. And I've listed what colors that we're going to use for each one of the squares. So for square A, we're going to use yellow, red, blue, and then white. The next chart is the granny square layout chart, and it's going to show us which squares are going to go where. And you actually will see here, it says to start here, and we're going to make A, then we'll make B, C, all the way. And you'll see the arrows are going to show us which square we're going to make next. And the reason why this is important is because we're going to be using the join as you go method. If you're already a crocheter and you have another way that you would like to join your squares, you can just make these in any order that you like. But for me, I'm going to be working it in this direction and I'll show you why when we get to the joining section. We're going to be making square A, and for square A, we start with the yellow color. And we're going to be making a slip knot, and I'm going to show you how I make mine. I'm taking my left hand and holding the yarn in my thumb and my first finger, and I'm giving myself a little bit of length. I'm going to wrap it around my first three fingers, and I'm going to hold it right here at the X, right here. Then I'm going to take my tail, and I'm going to push it through that loop, and I'm going to grab the tail and the other side of the yarn while holding on to my loop, and you'll see that it's a slip knot. And the way that you'll know that you actually have a slip knot is that your yarn should easily go back and forth. You can make your slip here bigger and smaller just by pulling on the tail. Then we're going to take our crochet hook and we're going to tighten it up, not too tight. You want it to be able to slip in and out of your crochet hook here. And the way that I like to hold my yarn is I take my palm up, I wrap it around my pinky, and then over my middle two fingers and under my index finger. And I'm leaving the tail out of the way. And now I like to hold on to that little knot. Now, if I've got too much slack here, I'm going to redo it, taking my pinky around over the two fingers in the middle and under my pointer finger. And I'm going to hold it with my thumb and my middle finger right on that slip knot. Now I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to go under my length of yarn here and I'm going to pull it through. That's called a chain and we're going to make four of those. So I just chained one. I'm going to go back under the yarn, chain two, go back under the yarn, chain three. This is called a yarn over and we're going to chain four. 
This is the very first part of the blanket. Now what we're going to do is we're going to join this part to this part. And I'm going to take my crochet hook and I'm just going to hold my yarn, my working yarn up here. One thing I want you to do is to look. You have four stitches here and the way that you can tell that they are stitches is that crochet stitches look like V's. And if you can look closely, you can see that I have one, two, three, and four. Now this loop up here on my hook does not count as a stitch yet. It's just a loop on the hook. I'm going to go back to that first crochet stitch, that first V, and you're going to see this side of it. We're going to go underneath that to join. I'm going to take my crochet hook. I'm going to go right into that loop here. I'm going to grab the yarn, pull it through, and now you see I have two loops here on my hook and I'm going to take this loop and pull it through just like this. Now we've created our ring and the thing that I kind of like to do at this point is to just pull on my tail a little bit just to make it nice and snug and I'm going to move it out of the way. Now we've made our ring and the next part of our pattern is that we are going to chain three. We're going to do exactly what we did to make our little ring. We're going to yarn over, pull the loop through. That was one. We're going to do it again two and three. Now this is our first chain three and it counts as a double crochet. That may not make any sense to you right now, but it will eventually, I promise. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, it's called yarn over. We're going to have the yarn over our hook and I like to hold on to it because now we're going to look for the center of our little ring here and it doesn't matter. Just look for a center. It's fine. It really doesn't matter exactly where you put it, but just aim for where you think the center is. I'm going to put my hook right into it. The hook is inside the ring. I'm going to grab a loop of yarn, pull it through. You'll see that I have three loops on my hook here. I'm going to yarn over, pull through two. I have two left, yarn over, pull through two. I just made my first double crochet. We're going to do that again. We're going to yarn over, put it through our center here in our ring. We're going to yarn over, pull it through that ring. Now we have our three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops yarn over, pull through two loops. We've now made our first three double crochet and remember that we talked about that that first chain three is considered our first double crochet. Now we're going to make two chains. So I'm just going to yarn over, pull through the loop, yarn over, pull through the loop. Now we're going to make three double crochet and the reason why we're not making a chain three here is we already have the height and that's the reason why you make a chain three here is to have the height of the stitch so that you can make the other two double crochet. But because we've already done it, we don't need to do another chain three. We can just move straight into our three double crochet. So we're going to yarn over. I'm going to hold on to it with my index finger, go right through the center, yarn over, pull it through. I have three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. I'm going to do that two more times, yarn over, through the loop, grab your loop, pull it through. You should have three loops on your hook now. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two. So now we've made two double crochet. We're going to make one more. So we'll yarn over, go right through our center of our ring, yarn over, pull through. We have our three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now is a good time to adjust our tension, get more length of yarn. And now we're going to chain two. So we're going to yarn over one, yarn over two. Now I like to pull on that little tail a little bit and kind of 
make sure that everything is working well and we're going to go ahead and make three more of those double crochet. So we're just going to do the exact same thing. Yarn over, go right into the center, yarn over, pull it up, go through the first two loops, go through the next two loops. We've made our first double crochet. We're going to do that again. Yarn over, go through the center, pull it through. We have three loops. Yarn over, pull through those two loops. Yarn over and pull through the next two loops. And at this point you may need to move your stitches over a little bit if they're starting to get crowded. Now we're going to do that one more time. Yarn over, go right into the center, yarn over, pull your loop up, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So at this point we should have three, six, nine stitches with two chains in between. And so now I want you to guess what are we going to do next? We're going to chain two, that's right, one and two. Now we're going to just do three more double crochet. Yarn over, go right into our center, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through the next two. We'll do that again. Yarn over through the center, yarn over, pull it up, three loops on the hook, pull through the first two, pull through the next two. I'm going to move my stitches over a little, yarn over, go through the center, yarn over, pull through the loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, go through the second two. Now we're going to finish with a chain two. One and two. Now what we're going to do is we're going to join this to the top of our chain three. So if we look at our stitches, we have one, two, and three. And we're going to look for that V. The V will be situated like this at this point, and we're going to go through both legs of that V. So we're going to take our crochet hook and I'm going to find that third V. One, two, and three. Here it is. Now, if you don't get it right away, it's okay. It really doesn't make a big difference. If you ended up doing it in the second one or you did it in a different spot, it will get easier as you keep going. So don't let this part trip you up. So I found the first leg of my V is right here. So I went underneath it. And now the second leg of my V is right here and I will go underneath it. And you can tell I'm in the stitch because my crochet hook isn't slipping out. Now I'm going to just yarn over, pull through that little section, and then I'm just going to pull it through. This is called a slip stitch. So we just slip stitch to close. Now you'll need a pair of scissors and I want you to leave a couple of inches here. Make sure you're not cutting it super close because we need to weave in these ends. So we're just going to cut and we're going to just pull it all the way through just like that. So now we have two ends that we need to weave in. And let me just tell you, you need to weave them in now. Do not do what a lot of us are tempted to do, which is to leave all this weaving end for the end because that is going to be miserable to try to weave in all the ends of this blanket at the very end. So do it after every round. So now one of the things to look at is to recognize the front and the back of your granny square. You're going to notice that on the back is that first tail that we had after we made our chain four and we joined them together. And this is a good way for you to look at it and see that this is the back and this is the front. And that way you really never get confused. And if you just look at it, you can see that there are differences. So we'll start with the back tail and I'm using a yarn needle, which just has a really large eye and it's very blunt on the end. It's not a sharp needle, but use whatever you have and what works with your yarn going to go ahead and thread that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go under some of these stitches that are here on the back. And I don't know, there's probably several of them that we're going under and I'm pulling it through. And then I'm going to go a stitch or two over and I'm going to go back the other direction. And then I'll do the same. I'll go back a couple of stitches. And that way my tail is really woven in, my square is not going to come apart, and it makes it so much nicer, it's very secure. And then we're gonna clip it right there so that you don't even see the end anymore. Now we're going to do the same thing with our other tail. 
And what I like to do is look for the stitch that's directly to the left of this one that's up here in the corner. And I just go through the back leg of that V. But it really doesn't matter. You just want to weave this tail in on the back of your granny square. I'm just gonna go down the length of this. Just make sure that looks good. And then I'm just going to weave back and forth so that it's nice and secure. One more time. Then let's clip it close. Now you don't realize it, but you just did the hardest part of the granny square and we're going to move on to round three. We finished our first two rounds and we're moving on to round three and this is for square A, so we're going to get our red color. And the first thing that we're going to do is to make a slip knot, just like we did when we started our granny square. So we're going to take our length of yarn in our hand and we're going to have the tail this way and we're going to hold it with our index finger and thumb, wrap it around our first three fingers, then cross it over and hold it. And then we're going to take that tail on this side and we're going to poke it th underneath and grab the loop. We'll grab the tail and our length of yarn and we will just pull and we have our slip knot and we're going to close it up more, but we don't want it to be super tight. We want it to easily be able to slip around on our crochet hook. So then let's go ahead and get our yarn back in position and ready to start. We're going to take our granny square and we're going to look for those chain spaces that we made that formed the corner of our granny squares. So we're going to just insert our crochet hook right inside. We're going to take it to the back and we're going to grab our yarn, pull it through, and then we're going to pull it through our slip knot and then we're gonna take our tail and tighten it up. So now you've joined your yarn and it looks so pretty already. And what we're going to do is we need our height. So we're going to chain three. So one, two, and three. And this chain three counts as our first double crochet. Now we're going to yarn over, go back into that space, yarn over, pull through, we have three loops. We're going to yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two. So we made our first double crochet and we're going to do that again. Yarn over through the space, yarn over, pull up. You have three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And so this is called a cluster stitch and you made four cluster stitches over on the first part of our granny square and you're making one now. And we're going to move it over a little bit and we're going to chain two, one and two. Now we're going to make three double crochet in the same corner space. So we're going to yarn over, go through our space, yarn over, pull through the loops, pull through the last two loops. Do the same thing again, yarn over, go back into the same space, yarn over, pull through the loops, pull through the loops. We'll do that one more time, yarn over, Go back into that same space, yarn over and pull up that loop. We have three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're going to need to make a little space to be able to make it all the way over to this other corner. And so we're going to chain one and then we'll make three double crochet in our next corner space. The one thing that I want you to note is that three of your clusters are going to look the same and one of your clusters is not going to look exactly the same. And that's because this is where we did our chain three. And there's gonna be a little space there, but that's not a chain space. All you need to do is always identify that space that we made between the cluster of stitches and just know that there'll always be three, one, two, and three. And then we're going to put our hook right there. So we're going to yarn over, we're going to put it into this chain two corner space. Pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're going to do that two more times. Yarn over, 
pull through the loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go back into the space, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now we're making our corner on this round. Chain two, and then we're going to make three double crochet back in the exact same space. Pull up our loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Do that two more times. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. One more time, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're going to be chaining one and we're going to make three double crochet into this chain two space. Yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We're going to do that two more times. And last time, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now can you guess what we're going to do now? Yep, we are going to chain two because we need another corner. And now we're going to make three double crochet back in that same exact space. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We'll do that two more times. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Once more, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we need to chain one. This is our side and we're going to go into our chain two space right here. Yarn over. We're going to make three double crochet here. One. two, and three. And now we're going to chain two. We're making our last corner and we need to make three more double crochet. One, and then our second double crochet, and our third double crochet. Move our tail out of the way here. Reposition my yarn. And now I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three. So I'm going to look for that third chain, one, two, and three. Let's look for the top of our chain three, one, two, and three. I'm going to go under the first leg of that V, and I'm going to find the second leg and go under that. And sometimes that's very tight. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to pull through again, and that's a slip stitch. Now we're going to trim our end, we're going to pull it all the way through, and now we're going to weave in our ends. We're moving on to round four, and for square A, we're going to be using blue, and so we're just going to keep doing exactly what we've been doing here, we're just making it bigger and bigger. So we're going to make a slip knot, my hook in. So we're just going to slip stitch into one of the chain two corners that we made from the previous round. I'm going to yarn over, pull that loop up, and then I'm going to actually just go ahead and pull it through that loop. And I'm going to pull my tail, and we're going to chain three. This should all be very familiar at this point, and you're like, oh yeah, I know exactly what I'm doing. And I like to pull my chain three over to the side just a little bit to give me room. Now we're going to make two more double crochet. Yarn over, pull up, go through two loops. Yarn over, go through the next two. We'll make another double crochet. Yarn over, go back into that same space, pull up the loop. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. And so we'll chain two now, one and two. Yarn over, go back into the same space. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two and we'll do that two more times. And once more. Now we're going to chain one, and we're going to make three double crochet right here in that chain one space from the previous round. So we're just going to yarn over, go right into that space, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We'll do that two more times. And 
And so we've made our little cluster with three double crochet. We're going to chain one. Now we'll go ahead and make three double crochet into our chain two corner space from the previous round. One and two and three. Now we're going to chain two to make a corner and we'll make three more double crochet into the exact same space. One, two, and three. Now we need to chain one and we'll make three double crochet into the chain one space from the previous round. One, two, and three. And then we will chain one. And now we're going to make another corner, which is three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So see if you can do that on your own. You can refer to the video, but I'll just kind of stay quiet now. One thing I want to show you is that if you've made a mistake, crochet is so forgiving. All you have to do is take your working yarn and just rip it out. You just pull it. It's so simple. So don't feel afraid if you need to rip back and restart something. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this corner again. So now we are going to chain one and we're going to make three double crochet right here in that chain one space from the previous round. And we're going to chain one. Now we're just going to make another corner with three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Then you need to chain one and we're going to make three double crochet in the chain one space from the previous round. Chain one. So the next thing that we're going to do is find our top of our chain three and we're going to slip stitch. So I'm going to find that top of that chain three, go underneath the first V of the leg and the last leg of the V pull it through and now I'm going to just pull it through to make a slip stitch. Trim it and pull it all the way through. So go ahead and weave in your ends and we'll meet back for the final round of our granny square. We're now moving on to our background color, which is round five. We're going to be using white because that's the color that was the background for the Justin Bieber blanket. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to make a slip knot and we're going to join our yarn into any chain two space from the previous round. Now, the one thing that I want to tell you, this is the only time that we're going to complete a full round of the background for this granny square for round five. For the other ones, because we're going to do the join as we go, that's what I'm going to show you next. So I don't want you to make all of your granny squares with the background and then come back to this video. What we need to do is make this one exactly this way, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to make all of the other granny squares in the entire blanket. So we're just going to start with our chain three and we're going to do two more double crochets. We're 
we're going to chain two and we're going to make three more double crochets. Then we're going to chain one and we're going to make three double crochet into that chain one space. I won't show you exactly how to do all of this. It's exactly how we've done every other round. You're just going to make three double crochets in our chain one spaces, and then we're going to make corners in every single corner, which is three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So you're just going to do that all the way around your square, and I want you to join at the top of your chain three here, and we're gonna meet back after we've finished this square. Now that you finished square A, we're going to look at our chart. And so we're starting here and we're making square B. So I want you to go ahead and make square B, which is your first two rounds are dusty pink, then you're going to make white, brown, but I don't want you to make round five. We're going to do round five together. So go ahead and make rounds one, two, three, and four with square B, but then stop. Don't do round five with your white. We're going to do that together. Now you should have made square B and we've finished rounds one, two, three, and four. We're going to go ahead and start our border, but what we're going to do is do the join as you go method so that as we make each square, we're going to be joining them together so that we don't have to sew them together. It's also the way that I believe in the Justin Bieber sushi date night blanket. I believe that the person who made that blanket also did the join as you go method. I could be wrong, but that's what I believe they did. So we're going to start with a slip knot. We're going to start right into our chain two corner like we've done for our other square. And we're going to chain three. Now we're going to make two double crochet into that same space. One and two. And we're going to chain two going to move my little cluster over. Now we're going to make three more double crochet here in that same space to complete our corner. Two and three. Now we're going to chain one and we're going to make three double crochet into our chain one space from the previous round. One, two, and three. Now we'll chain one and we'll make another cluster of three double crochets. One, two, and three. Now we're going to chain one and this is where it's going to start being a little bit different. We're going to make three double crochet here in our corner. One, two, and three. But now we're going to stop. We're not going to chain two at this point. Now we're going to take the first square that we made and we're going to go into the top of our chain two corner space. So I'm going to take my crochet hook. I'm going through the top of that hole and I'm going to use my thumb to help me to grab the yarn from underneath the granny square, pull it up through that chain two space, and then I'm slipping it through that loop. So now we're joined and we're going to just chain one. So the slip stitch act as our first chain in our corner and that second chain acted as the second chain. Now we're going to just make three double crochet back into that space from our second square, square B. So we've done one, two, and three. Now instead of chaining one, we're going to slip into the next chain one section from square A. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to go on top of our square, bring the hook underneath, grab the yarn from underneath, pull it up, and then slip it 
through the loop on our hook. That acts as our chain one, and so now we're going to just do three double crochet right into this chain one space on square B. One, two, and three. Now this is where we would make a chain one but we're going to join into the chain one space from square A. We're going to go from the top to underneath, grab the yarn, bring it up, slip it through the loop on our hook, and that acts as our chain one. Now we're going to just make three double crochet in that chain one space. Two and three three. Sorry, that was my cat. Now we're going to join again into our next chain one space. We're going to come from above, grab the yarn below, pull it up, slip it through the loop, and then we're going to make three double crochet into our corner chain two space. One, two, and three. Now instead of chaining two, we're going to look for that last corner chain two space from square A. We're going to come above it, grab the yarn below, pull up the loop, slip it through the loop on our hook, and then we're going to chain one. Because we needed a chain two here, the slip acted as our first chain and then we chained the second one. So now we're just going to make three double crochet to finish off the corner. Now we have joined these two squares together and we're just going to finish the rest of this round like we did on our previous square. Now that you've joined square A and square B, you're going to continue to use your chart to join all the way up. So we've made A, B, you're going to just work all the way up. Once you finish the first column and you're working on your second column, when you make square C, we're gonna meet back and I'm going to show you how to join squares C and B. And once you know how to do that, you will be good to go and you will know how to join all of your squares. Now that you've completed and joined an entire row of your granny squares, it's time to look back at our chart. You've done all of these granny squares and we're going to be moving on to this row. And we're starting with square C. I have my square C made through round four. And what we're going to do is we're going to join it exactly Exactly the same way that we did our other squares, but there's one really important thing to keep in mind. You want to make sure that your granny squares are in the correct direction that your chart is showing. So the top of my chart shows that on the first row that B should be the square on the top, and this is the square on the top, and I know that my square on the very bottom is A. We look all the way down and there's square A. So I've joined them all in the correct order. And why this is important is because the Justin Bieber blanket squares are on a diagonal as far as their colorway. If that doesn't matter to you, join them however you want. But if you want that same diagonal colorway combination, then we're going to need to do it this way. So we want to join our square on this side of our square B. Because if we do it on this side, we're gonna have to rip it out. So we're going to join on this side exactly the same way that we've done before. I'm going to go ahead and just join my white yarn into the corner here and make my clusters and corners and do all of that all the way across the top. Now I'm going to make the first three double crochets right here in the corner, just like we did before when we were joining them together. And I'm going to just turn my granny squares sideways and join right into this corner. Exactly the same way that we did before. 
and I'm going to chain one here and then make my other three double crochets right in the same corner space. And I'm just going to join down the side of our granny square row. This is when it starts to get really exciting because you can see the blanket starting to come together. just going to continue to join into that square going to chain one and now I'm going to just finish this fifth round all the way around my granny square once you've finished joining this square on your second round then I'm going to show you how we're going to join this granny square because we're going to have to join it on two sides now you've joined square C and on our chart, we need to do square B. I've gone ahead and started the border all the way across one side. I've done three double crochet and I am ready to join to this square. And this is how we're going to be joining. I'm going to go ahead and just join right into the top of this square here. Slip stitching and then chaining one. So we're just doing the exact same thing. I'm doing three double crochet. Slipping in to that chain space. It really only is different once we get into this corner that connects both of these squares. now we're in the corner here we're just going to do three double crochet just like normal now we're going to look at the two squares that we're going to be joining our working square with and that's the square above and the square right here to the side and we're going to identify those chain two spaces in those corners right here which is right here and right here so I'm going to go straight into this corner, just above like we've done before, pulling it through, slipping it. And then instead of chaining one, I'm going to go into this square in its chain two space, exactly the way we've done every other time. Going in from the top, pulling it up and pulling it through. And now I'm just going to double crochet three. This always feels a bit fiddly because you're kind of joining those three squares together, but now it's joined. Now I'm just going to join down the side like we've done all of our other squares. And that's it. That's how you join the squares together for the join as you go method. I really love this. It makes you feel like you're making a lot of progress on your blanket and joining them instead of waiting till the very end. So go ahead and finish this and continue joining your squares together. And then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do for the border. 
now we're going to talk about the border, which is something that you'll do at the end when you are finished with your blanket. I'm not finished with mine yet, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I looked at the Justin Bieber blanket as closely as I could. I zoomed in and I cannot see an actual border on that blanket. There may be one, but it's very difficult to tell, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I don't like to leave the rough edges like this. I like to just polish it off. And then of course you could add a border if you wanted to, but I'm just going to use the white because I do want this blanket to look like Justin Bieber's blanket. I'm going to do what's called a standing single crochet. So instead of bringing this through and then pulling it through, I'm now going to just yarn over and pull through both of those loops and it acts as a single crochet instead of having the slip stitch and then chaining one. But we're here in the corner, so I'm going to make two single crochet here in the corner. Then I'm going to look at the three stitches that are along the top here. And this is something that we haven't done with this project yet. And that is to just make single crochets. And you're going to see that little hole and on the top are the V's. And we're going under both legs of those V's. We're just going in the little hole underneath the V's, yarning over, pulling up, yarning over and pulling through. For the border, you wanna make sure that your tension is not too tight, otherwise it can cinch it in. And you want to make sure that you don't add a bunch of stitches because then you'll end up having a ruffled edge, which is very pretty, but not something that we're going for right now. So that was the second stitch, and then this is the third one. Now we have our chain one space, and we're just gonna go right into that space, and we're going to make a single crochet. Now we have our three stitches here and we're going to go right into our three stitches. And what we're doing is we're just matching how many stitches we already made and trying to match our tension. And we're going to go right into that space, single crochet, and then we'll go all the way across this cluster single crochet into that chain space and continuing along the top here. The one thing that we're going to do a bit differently is that we're here at our corner space. We're going to make one single crochet. Then we're going to chain one so that we can make it over here to this corner space. If we didn't do that chain one, it would bring it together and it wouldn't look as nice. We want the tension to look really nice. Now we have three more, and that first one is always difficult to find, but it's right there. One, two, and three. Then we're going to go into our space, and then one, two, three, go into the chain one space. We're just going to do this all the way across. And when we get to our corners, we're going to make three single crochet. That way we can get all the way around it. Go all the way around your blanket with this nice single crochet, neat little border. And I'll show you what we do when we get back to our very beginning single crochet that we started with. Now we're coming to the end of our border and I'm just going to go ahead and finish these last few stitches here. And now I'm here at the corner and remember we had made two single crochet in that corner. So I need to make one more and then I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that standing single crochet that we made. I'm just going to grab a loop and pull it through.
pull it through and we are done and I can weave in my ends. I hope you enjoyed making your Justin Bieber sushi date night blanket. Happy stitching!